Good Friday morning, Coach. How are you? Good. I mean, technically it's the afternoon, but I'm still good. Oh, yeah. It's uh, January 5th, the year. It's still a new one. The year is 2024. Welcome aboard, everybody. You're listening to the Crushing Iron Podcast, and this is episode 739. It is 7.30. Yeah, I've, it, that just reminded me, my mornings are a little different in years, timing-wise. <laughs> it's a little bit. Listen, it, it doesn't even matter. I mean, really, it doesn't even matter what we call it. Just as long as you're up, you're getting shit done, doesn't matter what time, what, what you call it. It's all different for everyone, and I think I can appreciate that. It's a, it's a gloomy, yet here comes the snow. Snow's coming down today. It's a <sighs> nasty day here, but you know what? I'm embracing it. I'm loving it. Hope you're all having a good start to your new year, and I trust that you are all smack dab and keeping your streak alive and your brand new, new, new year, new me, New Year's resolutions and uh you are uh, keeping on keeping on i know i am yeah i am too i'm i'm, I'm not gonna, i'm not gonna lie <laughs> I, but i am looking out at a beautiful uh, lake full of glass like ice and yeah. no snow up here which is pissing me off because that's one of the reasons i wanted to be up here because i love snow especially when it's cold i mean kind of takes the edge off i mean it does i think it wakes you up to live it's like a it's like mother nature's effervescent cough drop oh that's interesting you know you walk out and it's like it's like it's just brisk it's It's like like, you know that (laughs) what it it really is it's cozy it kind of it makes it It warmer i think it is i I love it i mean it really is it's i was thinking about that just the other day actually like how our body reacts so differently to things like you know in you know in the summertime you know you walk inside your house and it could be 74 degrees and you walk in and you're like, God, this is, I'm so cold. Like, this feels so good. But if you did that right now, you'd be like, I'm on fire. Why is it so hot in here? Because, uh, like, I, can't, I try to keep my house, like, 65, 60. Like, it's perfect sleeping weather. Like, nice and cold. If, you're, if your thermostat isn't set to where if you wake up in the middle of the night and you got to pee, you're like, do I really want to get out of bed and pee because it's so cold in here? Or do I really want to, or just want to suffer through and try to go back to sleep? That's how cold it should be. <laughs> And then in the in the summertime at 65, you're like, oh god, that's way too cold. It's freezing in here, and now it's perfect. Yeah, it's, we uh, we adapt, we change, and we always tend to be kind of prisoners of the moment. And and what is you know what's too cold, what's too hot, what's perfect, and it's all different. We're always adapting, we're always changing. Hope you've all had a fantastic week and are ready for an awesome year. If it's your first time tuning in today, welcome. We appreciate you giving us your time. We know you have. Quite a lot of options in the Triathlon Podcast universe and just podcasts in general. In terms of vibes, we appreciate you tuning in today. We cover it all. We do swim, bike, and run specific podcasts. We do race recaps and also a lot of race previews. But for the most part, Mike and I's coaches, athletes, best friends, we just sit back, relax, have an open, honest discussion about what we're going through in life, not just as uh, human beings, but also as coaches and athletes ourselves. We also talk frequently about what our own athletes are going through mike and i work with a wide range of athletes all across the globe from beginner level athletes from the very first 5k or sprint triathlon all the way up through elite level amateurs trying to get the back to world championships and everyone in between you from all over the globe and we use they use the feedback loop we have with them and training peaks emails text messages and the like to drive the discussion of the day uh, we also like to utilize our facebook group you can search that crushing iron group answer multiple questions we'll let you right in Awesome people, fantastic community, solid resource. In a uh, sport that is oftentimes way overcomplicated and way too confusing, it's a safe, solid, actionable space to find good intel from experienced individuals who have been there, done that. Hope you avoid some of your pitfalls you may uh, find along the, uh, the journey of triathlon. But that is it. We have no sponsors. We have no ads. But we do have an agenda and ask to do our best to keep you happy and healthy in your endurance sports journey. Nicely done, man. Thank you. Um, Feeling pretty strong about my intros right now. That's good. Yeah, and I I was thinking about cold because I've had to reconfigure my brain around cold since I moved back here. And uh, one of the things you know, there's a sauna outside, and sometimes I walk out there in shorts, barefoot, no shirt, and walk across ice and snow or a little bit of snow or something. And I just talk myself into believing it's not cold. And it really is an interesting flip of the switch. I think you just do that. When you get out of bed to go pee or whatever, Just it's not cold, man. Just uh, It's not. Just get up. Get it done. Just get trick up your brain. Yeah, I know. I hear you. 
trick, trick, trick your brain. I mean, you really it is. You just tell yourself to get things done and either get them done or you don't get them done. Um, before we get into uh, the meat and potatoes of the podcast today, uh, you talked about your uh, your um, on last or earlier this week of the podcast. You talked about your your uh, your word for the year was learn, which mm. we talked a little bit more and ex- extensively about on the podcast. But how much I I like that word. What? Uh, how has that gone for you in the last two days? Have you continued down the path of uh, learning? I mean, it sounds like it from our pre uh, pre show talk and the book you're reading. But have you continued down that path of learning and and exploration? Yeah, I, I really have, and it, it's been interesting. It, what it's done for me is it's um, helped me make decisions. Like I could be, I'm, I'm kind of a flailer sometimes. You're not, I don't think. But like sometimes I walk around and going boy, I got 8,000 things to do right now. What should I do? And then, you know, the next thing you know is I'm on the couch, you know, looking at the phone or something like that. But if I think about learn, I kind of keep, I've been keeping books out and different notepads and things like that. And I just sort of like shift my gear and go towards one of those things and start to figure out, you know, what I'm going to learn next. And it, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the whole thing, but it's just been a really interesting little experiment because I'm, I'm finding a lot more joy out of it and, and it's rewarding no matter how little it is, you know, like with the obstacle is a way book. I, I, I started taking notes with that. I said, and, and, uh, I liked it because it's, the chapters are real short. It's like four or five chapters. And I've been finding like, it's almost an interrupt. So I'll walk by it and I'm like, I'm going to just do a chapter and it's not overwhelming and I just sit there and take notes for it. And then maybe I'll do the dishes or what or something I might not really want to do. And then it's just sort of like, I'll break it up like that. It's kind of like I told, <laughs> I was talking about when I used to do trainer rides last year and I'd ride for a while. And during my recovery session, I'd get off and clean the room and then I get back on for the, but I, I find it um, for me, rather than digging in like forever on something I, it's kind of nice to be able to just break things up as long as you have things that you want to do and you can kind of go back and forth and especially with us we work by ourselves and for ourselves um it it seems to be a, f- a fairly um successful tactic at the moment what i loved about what you said about it kind of keeps you it keeps you focused is you have an intent every day Right. So I, I right. think that's something a lot of people struggle with is they, you know, like they, they kind of flail on the wind when they feel like they don't have any direction. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people struggle with this in, in a lot of areas of life. Like they, they, and listen, there's, there's nothing wrong with free time, right? Like we, we, I think we all need time to decompress. And I think that looks different for each of us, but I think it's also important to understand that we also need like an underlying you know, uh, intent or purpose, right? So when we have these moments of, ah, I could just drift off into Facebook, TikTok, meta land of Twitterverse or X, whatever it is, and legit waste every second of time. Mm -hmm. Just waste it. Yeah. Give it away. Hand it out, right? Instead, you think, oh, you know what? What, Right now I'm focused on this. Right now I'm trying to maximize my time with this, whether it's picking up a book, whether it's going for a walk, whether it's meditating, whether it's working on a, 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 a project around the house, you have this. I mean, so what that also does is instead of lead you down the path of being lazy and doing nothing, right? Or, you know, what I would say, I guess, in return is, or in another way is giving yourself to something and getting zero in return, right? And right. nothing positive. Like, I, th- I don't think anyone hops on and dives into Facebook or social media or, you know, YouTube videos and then finds himself walking and be like, man, that, man, I would have written a check for that. I mean, I, I just feel so much better. Like I feel uplifted. I feel good about myself. I got, I got a lot out of that. No, most people stop and shake their head and like, why the fuck am I even doing this right now? Mm-hmm. You're handing away time. You're getting nothing out of it. But instead, something like learn, or like for me, like last night, but we were going to watch the the Preds game as a family. And I was like, yep, I can't do anything yet. I got to read. Committed to myself that I got to read. You know, and there's nothing wrong with like getting value out of family time and watching a game, but the one of the things is like take these, take your available time, even if it's five to ten minutes. I think we all struggle with these like short five to ten minute increments of day of daytime or you know, work time or whatever it is, and we don't know how to maximize them, so we just piss them away. Like they're, they're to me, they're the equivalent of the twenty minute run that people just 
tossed by the wayside. <laughs> I don't have time for 20 minutes. We ain't got time for 30 then either. Mm. And so what happens is if you take advantage of these five to 10 minute increments throughout the day, could be two, could be three, could be four. At some point you look up and think, man, I maxed out an hour of my day and got something out of it. I read a book. I went for a walk. I worked on this project. I, I meal prepped. I made a list. You know, I got in a short run. I did some stretching. I did a few push-ups. You are absolutely maxing out the day versus handing over an hour. And then when you get to four or five o'clock, thinking, man, like, why am I so tired? Because again, like we spend so much of our time on a day-to-day basis, absolutely giving, giving to people, giving to time, giving to work, giving to relationships, giving to our pets, right? Giving to the world. We, the, the, the amount of time that we could, if we can increase in the amount of time that we give to ourselves, one, you're going to feel better, be, you know, be healthier, be happier, but you're also going to be able to handle and not be so jaded or complaining or, disgruntled when you have to give yourself to other things. And so I just think that's, and when you, when you talk about training, you talk about, you know, looking and you, you talk about this <clears throat> more than anybody I know is about, you know, how much you love seeing oranges and yellows and training peaks, mm-hmm. right? You got an hour and 15 minutes on tap, but I don't, I just don't have time to do the whole thing. So I'll just do nothing. And so you do legit nothing. You had an opportunity to get 30 minutes of, maybe that's all you have, right? 30 minutes, get 30 minutes of, of work in, Instead of anticipating you might go to do it tomorrow or just doing nothing, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel better about things. So I think there's, you know, again, starting in the year out where a lot of people, I think, overly focus and overly obsess on perfection, right? Meeting their goals, meeting their, you know, their expectations, making sure they're on track, right? It is all about perfection. And at, at the smallest sign of imperfection, a lot of us just kind of veer way off. Right. Oh, it's, it's, it's imperfect. It's, I kind of, you know, it's, I was joking. I think it's my mom the other day cause she was going through, uh, um, some stuff from my grandfather and my grandma now that both pass and like coins and stamps. I was like, isn't it funny that like when, you know, they print in the back of the day when they printed money and in these dollar coins that like they thought the ones that were imperfect, they like tossed to the side and mm. now they're worth like 10 times as much as the ones that were perfect. Right. They like, they like, Oh, you, you've got one of the, 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 you know, imperfect scratched, you know, 19, you know, 24, you know, dollars or whatever. And to me, it just, we, we have this, such this focus and obsession with perfection. That's a total myth, a total myth. And I I just think that the better, when we talk about this a lot, I know is just the better we can be with flexibility, but also how we can be intentional with that flexibility from a time standpoint, whether it's on your calendar, whether it's somebody like yourself, as you just talked about, yeah, I've got, you know, I, I find myself in a, you know, what I call no man's land, you know, like we talked about two weeks ago between the, the time between, you know, Christmas Day and New Year's, mm-hmm. instead of just pissing it all away, it's still one, it's still, you know, uh, 2% of your year, don't piss it away, get something out of it. And so I think there's, there's so many opportunities from the time we wake up, from the time we go to bed to get, to get something out of, of life and day to day and a training and make yourself fitter and healthy and happier than just pissing it away doing something because we don't label it good enough or long enough or hard enough. Yeah, I, mean, I, I am obsessed with figuring out, because, uh, you know, I've been doing Ironman for 10 years in a row or whatever, and I still love it. And I'm trying to, I'm obsessed with figuring out how to love it again in a lot of ways, you know, or I don't know how to explain that, but just to make it more enjoyable because I think about triathlon in a lot of ways right now as sort of a supplement to your personal power and how you can get to the strength spot of who you are and then use training to make it even better rather than using it to be the, the vessel or whatever, however they say that. And, you know, I was thinking about um, like what you said with regard to how i bop around and do little things here and there and everything like that. And as you were saying it, I kind of was just, I went, you know, you know, cause with me writing is one of my things. And I was mm-hmm. thinking that, you know, what if I just, whatever it is, if it's writing or anything that you sort of have a little passion for, what if you spent 10 out, 10 minutes a day on it? And I just did a little quick, um, add it up. That's 60 hours a year, you know, <laughs> and just think about how much better, you would be at something if you did that much of it. And it's just a little, you know, like a, just a little snack every day of just doing it. And, and I think what we don't recognize sometimes is what 
that may trigger, you know what I mean? Like if you 10, 10, 10, you know, it's like that 20 minute run you're talking about. If you just kind of went out and did 20 minutes every other day and then what, what might that amount to? Not only if you just did that, but if you did it and then you started feeling better with and stronger and everything like that, and you just kind of like maybe evolved into it. So I think, you know, any kind of change or any kind of goal we have to, or goal we set is, has to start with little, you know, chunks. And, you know, I, I just think that if you can figure out like a little excitement about it without the pressure, you know, whether it's you want to be a better cyclist or you want to be a better runner, um, practice the little things and just do, you know, even if you're in your daily training, practicing something, you know, for 10 minutes on the bike, you know, maybe it's uh, you want to get stronger and work on big gear or you want to get it more explosive and faster cadence, work on that for just 10 minutes a, you know, a day or something like that, or, in, you know, work it into your workouts, whether it's swimming, biking, and or running, and just kind of practice that, like practice a little bit of explosiveness or something like that, or practice strength. And it's, you know, the problem a lot of times, I think, with these type of things in training is that, you know, uh, you know whatever you're doing to improve yourself isn't going to be recorded by your garment a lot of times. And that I, I totally get that because sometimes I'll be, you know, even with my saunaing, I'll put the Garmin. On. I want to make sure I know how long I was in or I want to, you know, create a record or whatever. But I don't know. There's something about just generally feeling like you are attacking most of the day in a good way that just creates a momentum that doesn't make that stuff as valid or, you know, important anymore. You know, you know, you're doing the right things. So just building good patterns and, and things like that is really important for me, at least to know that, you know, like I, you're not going to get everything perfect and it's easy to, so easy to get distracted now. And I know that's probably a huge part of that book you're reading, right? Is distraction because it's so easy and people are so quick to give you like, and and it's okay. That's all right. Everybody gets distracted, you know, that kind of support, you know, it's, it's all, it's okay to be lazy or whatever, but you have to be, you know, disciplined to yourself. And I, I'm, I'm just saying it out loud. I, I'm not the greatest with it, but these are the things that kind of help me find a, a groove and, and, you know, bite off chunks that I can actually handle. Well, and I think embracing the fact and the knowledge and, and the acceptance really that it's never going to be perfect is very empowering because yeah. I, I think a lot of, I think so many people, you know, uh, there was in part of the, I'll, I'll share another quote in a minute, but one of the, um, the, the sentences I read last night in my chapter that I read it twice. I said, this, this chapter is so good. I'm going to read it twice. And it said, there, it said, there's a different way to spell perfectionism and it's, it spells out paralysis. Mm. And that's so true for not just so many people, but so many athletes well, I just, I, I can't get started yet. You know, I'm, I'm waiting for things to kind of really clear up with my job or clear up with my relationship or clear up with my kid. Like, I'm just going to wait and wait and wait. Or I think I'm going to wait to this race until things really look good. I'm like, when, when are we ever going to know those things? When are we ever going to be totally in control? We're not. We are not. And so many people, again, and athletes who they wait. I think I'm going to wait. I think I'm going to wait. I think I'm going to wait. And then it never gets done. And, and we, we, we label, we not label, we, we insert that stuff like that, like you said, because, because we're distracted, right? But I, th- I think we use distracted a lot, way too much now as just an excuse. Ah, there's so many distractions out there. You know, you got your phone, you got your emails, you got your kid, you got your responsibilities. And, you know, we're still in unprecedented times, you know, three, three years down the road, you know, from people are still using that excuse. I'm like, listen, if you hadn't, if you hadn't adapted yet, then you're not going to adapt. This happens. Like it's it's time to it's time to be flexible and be adaptable. And the best way to go about it is to understand that it's never going to be perfect. No buildup is perfect. Very 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 few sessions are perfect. I don't I don't even know in the ten plus years that I've coached if I've ever had an athlete say, "Man, coach, I really planned for that session to go perfect, and it did. It was perfect." No, I have two things that happened. One, man, I really thought that was going to be awesome day, and it just felt like trash. Or, now, coach, I really wasn't feeling today, but I went out and had the best run of my life. Yet, we stood here, right? 
very, very similar to, um, you know, the fact that we, everyone on the planet jokes about how, or not untrustworthy, but how wrong the weather people are. Yet, what do we do every damn day? Yeah. What's the weather look like today? <laughs> what's the weather going to be in two weeks? What's the weather going to be like in my race in April? You know, what's the water temp going to be in four months? We 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 say it out loud and we still do it, right? So we have these experiences like like uh, runs where we have high expectations and we get absolutely, you know, we have a terrible result or we hop on the bike with no expectations. We felt like trash. The day's been terrible. We hop out and all of a sudden our legs are like, hello, you have an incredible day. You know, we walk in the pool deck frustrated and we're, we're mad we got to share a lean, even though we swim with 3,000 people in a lake and, and sharing a lane with a person is the most inconvenient thing you're ever going to do in your life. And you're disgruntled and, and pissed off. And next thing you know, you're busting out your best 100-yard splits you ever have. That's what happens. That happens 99% of the time, more so than the 1% where someone goes out and thinks that they're feeling incredible, and then it actually happens. Yet... As humans and, and as athletes, we are obsessed with the with the um, the forecasting of of the progression of what we would call perfection. Perfect weeks, per, excuse me, perfect weeks, perfect training, perfect long rides. You know, perfect perfect health, never getting ill, no job stress, no life stress. Everything goes perfect. And then, then the fact of you know you're nailing like that's why it's so interesting to watch behaviors to start the year. Monday is awesome. Tuesday is awesome. Wednesday is awesome. Thursday is awesome. Or, or Thursday is a bad day. And eh, get a red. Well, I'll just start back over next week. And if you think about the math when you do that, and so many athletes do this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, perfect, perfect, perfect. And eh, missed a day. Instead of getting their ass back on the horse, I'll just wait till I'll just wait till Monday. So now you go three on days, four off. You lost that week. You lost. You're negative one on days. You did it for three. You gave up on four. You're in the red. You're in the red. And the chances are that may or may not happen the next week. Never expect perfection. If you have a good week, you have a good week, right? If you don't have a good week, you don't have it. But all you can expect is to do the best every time and every opportunity that you have. You know, I'll wait till tonight and do it. And I don't want to get up. And I'll push it to this weekend. You know, it's like the quote that I shared with you before we went live today. The man who waits for tomorrow is the same man that waits to cross the river for it to dry up. Yeah. What makes you think tomorrow you're going to be a different person than you were today? If you woke up a procrastinator, if you woke up uncommitted, if you woke up undetermined, if you woke up unfocused and you put it off with tomorrow, why do you think you're going to wake up tomorrow and all of a sudden be dialed in and ready to go? You can't, sometimes you have to force yourself to do it, right? To get those things out of the way, to get things done, to make that progression and to show yourself that you can actually get it done. And again, like we talked about earlier this week is creating that momentum, right? Going back to the 20 minute run piece. Oh, that's not worth it. I don't have time for that. It's not going to do anything for me. So much of it isn't about the 20 minute run as it is about the behavior, the dedication. I can do this. Even if I don't think it's going to add up to much, even though it does an hour a week, four hours a month, then it's it's a huge deal, right? Again, you know, four four hours a month it goes up to forty eight for the year. Two whole days of extra running. Nah, it's not worth it. Eh, don't have time for it. You you got plenty of time. You just don't have the discipline. And so when you think about small things like that and fitting them in and, and waiting for tomorrow, waiting for today, or I guess I could run right now, but I'm not. I'm gonna go do it tomorrow. Are you? Why do you think tomorrow's gonna be different than today? Is it gonna be less stress? No. Nope. Less responsibilities? Nope. You got no, you got no idea what the weather's going. It may or may, coach, coach. Listen, I know it's Wednesday. But the forecast says it might rain Saturday. Should we go ahead and flip flop the ride and the run here? <laughs> <laughs> and you're laughing because we get favorite. this shit all the time. No, <laughs> just wake up and make a decision. Right, wake up, make a decision. All right, and a lot of times it's, I mean, legit. Ninety percent of the time, anyone forecasts that forecast, it's wrong. They woke up and it rains like they, 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 they do their run on Saturday and it's perfectly sunny and, sh and, and then they go to ride the next day. What happens? Rain. And so they right back where they started with, you know? And so again, it just, go, it just comes back to, and the, the message is so, I think important for, for especially triathletes. They're, they're very type A, they're very, you know, perfect. We want immediate feedback and, and we want to see results, but we also want it to be all perfect. 
in an imperfect world with imperfect conditions and imperfect people. We all want perfect. And just the, the the more you can distance yourself from that and realize that the best you know quote unquote perfect you can do each and every day is to just maximize and max it out each and every day, every minute of everything you do. When you take a breath, take a breath, but don't pretend like it's all going to be better tomorrow just because you pushed it off. And when you're saying that about that rain, I, I know I I was I always say go ride in the rain. <laughs> You know, because I think back to, you know, that Wisconsin I did two years ago and, um, you know, we showed we knew it was going to rain that whole day. And I think about 20% of the field didn't even start. Think about that. You train all year and you don't even start because it's raining and it's going to be cold, but, and it's probably because you flip flop too many of those ride runs, <laughs> you know, it's like you gotta, you can't rewire your will or your toughness by not experiencing it and i i love i just always go back to amelia boone she's like she sets up and trains at the hardest time of the day and i just think that's so brilliant i mean if you can practice harder than you race then you're going to be all right you know but one of the things i was thinking about you mentioned control how we try to control things and you know the guy that wouldn't walk across the river until it, you know, dried up. But that's been a struggle for me because that question, and we may have talked about this way back ago, but like, don't worry about things you can't control. That's always been a mystery to me because you feel like you can kind of control things, right? You know, like for example, uh, you know, this is just my feeling. Um, but like, I feel like the taxes in the world are just ridiculous you know, for, and, but that's something that I can't control, you know, but to be obsessed about that. And I've had, you know, situations where I've been drawn down that hole and it just pisses you off. And, you know, you want to you change the, you know, property taxes in the area are too high. I mean, I guess you could go to meetings and kind of put your word out there, but other than that, things, there's a lot of things out of your control. I think it was an obstacles way. It's like the only, basically the simplest way to look at that situation is you can control things that affect your emotions and you know like and you can control whether or not you're going to go out and, and and run and I think a lot of that comes down to the state of mind you're in and you can, can sort of change that and it's weird it's sort of like laying around in your sweats or pajamas on the couch certainly you don't feel like running but you have to shift that you, know, you have to do something to change the state of your mind your body and that's what we talk about all the time is the hardest part is a lot of times putting on the shoes. But it's weird, though, how that once you get them on and you get your running gear on or whatever, you really do change. It's almost like you went from a lazy slob on the couch to a, an athlete just by kind of shifting, you know, the way you're dressed and, and your posture and things like that. So these are the things we can control and to get. I think a lot of us just get kind of steeped in, in uncontrollables and, and wish we could do something, but it's not, it, it's such a waste of energy. And that's the kind of thing I'm trying to teach myself right now is just to be able to, you know, sort of let things go. I mean, even, even the best laid plans can go to shit and sometimes you just have to accept it. You know, you can't keep, hammering away at something that's not going to work you gotta have to adjust and be fluid and you know all these things that I, I think that type of mindset can generally genuinely make you a better athlete too you aren't as tense and you know upset or raging about something and that just translates into more fluidity in everything you do and it's such a beautiful thing to think about that we kind of do and have control over those kind of things. And, you know, you look at the best athletes in the world, it doesn't even, it looks like they're not even trying half the time. And there's something beautiful about that and being able to find that state of mind where you can just release your body. I mean, we, I think we all tend to hold in a lot of potential just from the shit that goes on in our mind and, and, and the doubt that we might have or whatever, but to release yourself is uh and I like to talk about that a lot when, you know, like running strides or something like that, 
don't put the hammer down and just grit it out. Just let your body go a little bit. Get used to running freer, riding freer, you know, uh, swimming freer. I mean, we all tense up in the water, most of us. And I think that's a really good goal to have is just to be able to go in there and just let go because a lot of times you end up going faster when you're not even trying as hard. I, th- I think in all the camps we've ever done, I've never once uttered the words, you should really tense up some more. Yeah, exactly. You should really be a little tighter here. It's almost always loosen up a little bit or relax. Just rely. I'll take people's arms and just shake them. I'm like, just relax. Right. And it's, it's the, the, the tension and right. And the tightness that you see is a direct reflection of the paralysis in their mind. They're thinking so hard and so much about so many things to be perfect on. They're being, they're being to a whole different degree imperfect. I mean, it's, you can see it with people swimming. You can tell when they're thinking about too much shit. I'm like, like, how many things are you thinking of right now? (laughs) And, you know, I think that's, uh, you know, I think that's just a huge thing for all athletes to think through is that, is that piece of relaxing and flow and flexibility. And, and, you know, again, that's also when you get, I think you get so much more out of it, whether it's a 10 minute, 10 minute run or a 10 minute stretch or, or strength and conditioning session or, or a six hour ride. Right. You know, you, you get out what you put in, but just cause you're there and doing, it doesn't mean you get a lot out of it. You maybe do, you maybe do some physically, obviously, but mentally and emotionally, what are you getting out of it? Right. The expectations too high. Are you, you know, and to, again, like to go back down to like the stuff that, you know, in talking about the devils and the details is, you know, like the athletes who give up on the small things that that's also, that's also impactful, right? Not from, from a physical standpoint, from a, a mental and emotional standpoint, right? A lack of a lack of discipline to be to to do to pay attention to small things, because then you're a lot less likely to pay attention to them further. So it really is. It's it's a very um, it's it's a very interesting you know behavior and mindset, which is I think in my in my experience, that's one of the biggest challenges as a coach uh, to to work through that and massage athletes in that way to get them to loosen up a little bit, to be more flexible and to be more accepting and to, to take ownership, not of perfection, but of, of really honestly, more so it's just time management skills. It's still worth it. A 30 minute run is always worth more than zero. You know, a, a, four, a 40 minute run is always better than an unplanned missed or excuse me, a, a missed hour and 20 minute run. And and that's that's honestly like a really terrible mindset to be in. Is I, yeah, I had, I had a two hour long run this weekend. I just I just I didn't have time for it. I'm gonna I'm gonna push it. They don't want to run for forty because then it it doesn't look like it's perfect mm-hmm. or it's not long enough to be good enough. But but effort and intent and progress towards your goal never come rarely right. You know, unless you're taking a day off because you don't feel well, you got a niggle. You know I get that. But you know what we're saying here is like never comes from from taking days just to take days you're taking steps back you're not taking steps forward yeah that's an interesting one that two hour run and then it becomes a red or zero and i i just you know a lot of times you have like when you there's been times when you have a two hour run and you have plenty of time you feel good and you go out and you do it and it feels awesome and you kind of decompress and cool down and take your time and there's so many situations where we are pressed for time and I, I I try to convey this idea that you know if you have an hour and 15 minutes give yourself some buffer on both sides of this you know maybe go out and you, you, you know you can't get the two hour whatever go out and do like you said 45 and and warm into it and cool down and and, and there's some beauty in stopping when you're ahead too you know um you feel good. You know, it's kind of that George Costanza, I'm out of here. After you make them laugh, just get out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm out of here, man. And because I've done that many times. It's like, yeah, you you can either drive yourself into a ground or you can keep feeling good and hope that the next day or the momentum that you create gives you something good the next day. I mean, it doesn't have to all be done right now. You can, mm-hmm. you can't. You got, this is a long process, you know. I guess, I guess, uh, you know, if you can't get that two-hour run in and you can get 45, that's a huge win. 
because you're not giving up. You're keeping something going. And the same with the, everything. Just get in the water, you know. I, there's something about getting in the water. I, I tell people like, when they're having trouble getting into the pool, just like go there for 15 minutes and splash around it. Because every time I get in the water, I feel better, period. Mm. It's hard to get in, but once you get in, your, your body, there's something about the water that just makes you feel better. So just go there and splash around and throw a Nerf football for a while and then just kind of get back in the groove. It doesn't always have to be a ball busting swim or a two hour run. Just do something that makes you feel good. And then like, you know, rejoice in that fact and and save some energy for the other shit you're trying to do your 10 minute writing or your stretching or whatever it is. You're going to get so much more benefit from things like that. and, And, you know, thought processes like that, then I think you will by always thinking that you have to just, burn it all out and leave it all on the table every day. And I think that's, you know, important to, to note, right? When you, when you lay out a plan, whether it's your coach's plan, whether it's your plan, whether it's, you know, a static plan you got from paper, the moment you start it, the next day it's already different and imperfect. Something's different. Mm-hmm. You changed. Like your, your body changed, your mind changed, how you responded changed, your commitment level changed. Everything's always changing. Everything's always fluid, and that's why I think we get so we get so caught up in in you know planning way too far out and being yet being prisoners of the moment. And I just I think that's too like it's a really um, unfortunate combination. I think most athletes find themselves in is they they predict and they want this perfect scenario eight months from now, nine months from now, ten months from now. And then they become a prisoner of the moment before, right before their workout because they can't do it exactly like they want it. And that's the only way they're going to to bring value or to, to, you know, to honor their plan or their goal is to do the whole thing. And they don't think something's better than nothing. It has to be perfection or not, right? You know, beat tomorrow or beat yesterday and do everything better and get bigger, better, faster, stronger every day. Got to kill myself here. Got to crush myself here. That's not how it works. And that's definitely on the way to sustainability, right? And doing it for long term. Most athletes, though, you might see some short term, like four to six, eight week gains by, you know, going hard for a little bit. But then you 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 overtrain and that takes you a while to get to unearth. I mean, sometimes I know I have a I had one, I think it took us two and a half months, maybe almost three, to to get them out of the overtraining uh uh aspect that their body was in from being trained way 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 too much and way 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 too hard for too often you get some good results in the beginning but then you're then you're then where are you right you lost going back to like you know you nailed your first two days and lost last four years and now you're in the red you know versus you know you know like we we say all the time my favorite quotes is the best kind of ability is availability mm-hmm. and that doesn't mean again perfect availability every day because, you know, the, again, going back to, you know, making a, making a good, you know, giving it the good old college try, right? You know, I always joke with people that I, I would love to see, I think we just talked about this recently. I'd love to see the percentages of people who took a semester off and came back to school. Yeah, sure. as hell no, I didn't. Most people I would have to imagine take a semester off and never go back, <laughs> take their life off. Right. And, and I, I use that analogy. I know I did. But I use an analogy to say, what's more likely, like a student to take a whole semester off and come and come back or uh, a student to take, you know what, instead of trying to do 17, 18 hours this, this semester and make the honor roll, I'm going to do two to three classes here and try to do them really, really well. Get some confidence, maybe work, work on time management, maybe figure out an actual, you know, like, you know, degree they actually want to get you know, that might, you know, service them the rest of their life. They're, they've got to be much more... Um, and much have a higher likelihood of, of coming back the next semester, right? And doing it again, and then maybe increasing hours. So there's, there's this, there's this, there's this give up and give in and push off or procrastinate mentality we get in because we always think we can always do everything the next day or that we'll change and we'll come back. Right. And that's just not the case. And that's why it's so important to try and get as much value and as much return on your time that you're given each day in every avenue and every aspect, then to just, you know, piss it all away 
and give it all away to things that legit give nothing back to you in return. Whether it's social media, whether it's staring at the wall, whether it's, you know, talking bad about other people, whatever it is, whatever, whatever that your mindless vice is. I mean, even even screen time late at night, you know, kind of feels like it might be good for you. But basically everything, everything you'll ever read on on good sleep hygiene basically says don't do screen time at night <laughs> because it impacts your sleep, it impacts your sleep, it impacts your health, it impacts your sleep, it impacts your your commitment, your ability level, your, excuse me, your ability and your drive and your energy to want to train. Yet that's what we do anyway, right? And so I just think it's, you know, kind of going back to, you know, what I talked about earlier this week and it's like if, you know, if cigarettes were, uh, you know, invented today and they came out on the market, you know, how many people would actually start smoking them? Probably not that many. You know, it's kind of what I, I fear will happen to vaping once they figure all the studies on all the studies on those. Right? Is is what, what's good for us? What's bad for us? What's your vice? Right? And finding ways to have these small that might not seem significant different levels and opportunities of focus and intent like yours. Like learn. Well, I've got some free time up. I'm committed to learning. What am I going to do right now? Am I going to pick up a book? Am I going to hop into Training Peaks? Am I going to read something else? What am I going to do right now? Right? What am I going to do to push myself further into a better direction of living and life and training? Because you rarely ever sit still, right? You're either moving forward or moving backwards. And so when you think about that in every kind of like minor minuscule decision that you're accustomed to either making or not making, you kind of, you realize how often it adds up, right? If you, if you go into your, your iPhone and at the end of Sunday or you get the updates like, Hey, you spent your average daily use of screen time, right? Let's say it's four hours a day. You understand that you just spent an entire day of your week looking at your, your, your screen <laughs> an entire over entire day of your week. That to me is, is insane, right? So every seven weeks you spend an entire week of your life staring at your phone. Wow. Uh, that's so damn for a minute. Everybody think about what you're getting out of that zero. In fact, you're probably losing. It's, it's definitely an, it's definitely a net negative, right? It's not a net positive. Doesn't make you feel good, affects your sleep. Yet here we are, right? So these small and like you know, put a put your phone in a wrapper and make yourself like get it out of a Ziploc bag or cover it up or or you know you know uh, limit your screen time with you know the apps and the and the the things you can do on your phone and ask yourself, do I really need it? Do I really not need it? I mean, I did that to my Facebook app. I put, I put it down to ten minutes a day. Um, I wondered where you went. Yeah, I wish I put it on 10 minutes a day. <laughs> Even when I get to that, and, and now that I've not done it, like I, I'm, I'm like up to like, you know, six o'clock in the evening. It's like, hey, you're about to reach your limit. I've only spent 10, I've only wasted 10 minutes of my life today. And it still feels, it still feels kind of nasty to say that. Yeah. I wasted 10 minutes of my whole day scrolling through bullshit that 60 hours a year. I could have been doing something else. Right. And so I just think that's, again, give that example because we can all relate to it. Uh, cause we all have that in my opinion, most people have that, that problem, that addiction. We all do like, you know, you grab your phone, even if it's not notifying you, we grab it. I miss a notification. All notifications on. And I got to pick up, I got to tap the screen. Got any notifications? Tap the screen. When there's plenty of things going on right and around you and you could be actually, instead of waiting for something to alert and notify, you could be pushing forward, getting something else done. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's just, it's hard and it's best to be mindful about that kind of stuff, you know, because we are, you know, we are weak a little bit, you know, and oh, for sure. uh, <laughs> you know, th- th- there's, there's only one time when I don't eat cookies, you know, when that is. No, I actually don't. When I don't have them. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I, true. <laughs> I, I, yesterday, uh, we had cookies here, uh, for the last it, week and there was three fancy. in there and I just said uh, they're gone you know because I got them out of my life <laughs> and I probably won't go to the store for several days or whatever and <laughs> now I won't eat them but I think it's but I was okay with it and I think I was talking to you before the cast about this but 
but sometimes we eat stupid shit. And I think if we can be gracious with ourselves and be like, okay, that's, you know, something that just happened. It's okay. But now I, you know, I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to keep eating these and it's okay. I think if it's easy to get trapped in this idea that, oh man, I ate too many cookies and now I'm going to get sick or I'm going to feel like shit, but don't let yourself do it. You just did them. It is what it is. It's energy. It's sugar. Yeah. It's a, some kind of fuel. I mean, we do that on the course. We do that when we're training. We just put sugar in our bodies all the time. And yeah. we seem to get over it. Uh, it doesn't have to drag you down. And I just think being mindful every time you do it. That's what I try to do is I eat a cookie and I, I'll savor it. And the Because the, I've eaten, you know, six or eight and then, then put them in the trunk or whatever, but sometimes you just eat without thinking about it. And I think it's important to sort of just acknowledge that you know what you're doing and pay attention to it and do it slowly. And I think that's a good way to kind of let that drop away a little bit, you know, with my phone lately. And that's a big one with me because I am hundred percent certain because I've lived through it when I lost my phone for three days that if you don't go on there, you're going to have more energy period. I, I'm just a huge believer in that. So now I just try to leave it in different rooms and things like that when I'm working or I don't really go on there for any particular reason. I, I don't know why. It's just so addictive. It's incredible. Just the idea of going on there and looking through a feed or something like that. And that plays into my what can I control. I, I don't know why on earth you know, we look for certain things and, and we let them get to us. I know I'm weak that way. I get it. And I know it affects me. So I'm just trying to do it, but sometimes I'll pick it up and I'll do it. And then it just is slowly, I feel like maybe not having as much impact. And that's Listen, a win. I mean, we're all weak. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Super like we, weak, man. We're all weak in, in some, some in different areas, some in not right. But I think that's an important distinction to make is that you know we all have weaknesses and vices and things that we should never anticipate being perfect about which is also okay i mean i think one of your one of the greatest strengths you can have is understanding or having a true honest understanding of what your weaknesses are and then just doing your best to work on them right you know was expecting you to always be perfect and to give up sweets for life Right. But maybe just understanding what your relationship is with, you know, with food and why you do things a certain way. Right. Like I, I've been doing something when I eat, I've been timing myself and making sure I don't finish my food in less than 10 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, that just made me laugh. Because, it, because I get to that point where I don't save or anything. I just, I just shove it down. I mean, I could eat an entire 14 ounce ribeye in two minutes flat. Yeah. Hey, I've seen you do it. You see me do it. Like oh. there's no savoring. There's just lick done. your fingers. Make your sure you lick every finger between yeah, every bite. Yeah, like just, <laughs> and that's what I've got. I've been doing that the last week, and I have to kind of slow myself down and make sure that I'm taking my time, ready to take my time to do everything, and not being in a total rush. And that's the kind of one of like the small things that sounds insignificant, and it's kind of funny when you say it out loud. But that's what I've been doing. <laughs> That'd be a great YouTube video. Put it on <laughs> you, and right. with a clock on there, with a minute timer. Let's see how slowly he can eat a salad today. He made it last bite ten oh eight. 10.08, it's kind of like watching the uh, EOS, but it's kind of like watching the sloth of the DMV in this movie, Zootopia. <laughs> You're in this like g- giant hurry. And then he's, he takes like five minutes to say this joke. It's, hyster- it's hysterical. Anyway, um, but you know, like going back to, you know, things like, you know, your weaknesses, it's again, like there's, again, no one's expecting perfection and we definitely aren't. And you and I are definitely far from, you know, we are perfectly imperfect. And that's for sure. Um, is to know that. And, and I think it's, it, I think embracing your weaknesses is, is a great way to get stronger and not just avoiding them or giving in because you think you can't make them your big, you only have one strength, right? Somebody can only have one strength. If your biggest weakness is, is the pool, stop avoiding it. Try to get a little bit better at it because that promise you will carry over to the bike and run. If you're scared of hills, go take on hills. You, you might not be, you know, the, the prefontaine, but you'll be better than you were yesterday. Holy shit. What? What are you dropping bombs for? Sorry. 
Well, <laughs> because I was going to, I was going to end it quickly with the, the question is of, if you've seen that Prefontaine movie. I have. Yeah. Okay. But that was it. That was, was going to be your question. That was well, your I was just, I moment. just wrote it down. And then you said, you just said <laughs> his name. <laughs> Synergy of thought, man. That's unbelievable to me. Synergy I mean, thought. it's believable. It's not that big a thing, but. But yeah, laugh at your weakness, man. That is powerful. And understand it. I mean, it's and then you know, try to work on it. You might not ever make it perfect, and that's that's fine. But don't give up on it and don't mail it in and don't use it as your it's just not my thing. Of course it's not. You avoid it like the plague. Mm. Yeah, I can't swim. Never worked out for me. When was the last time you see him? Yeah, October. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. Of course yeah. it's not your thing. You give up on it every single day. Right. And, and just think it's uh it's one of those things we could all work on as we, you know, as we approach the first quarter of the year and just approach the year in general, you know, is is to is to really go in and dive into those things that that may, you know, that may be uh, you know, what you feel like is a weakness or a shortcoming. Don't avoid it. Fucking dive in straight head first and see what happens. And you, you I promise you'll get something out of it. Yeah. One of the things I like to do with my swim when I'm not in the mood for it is give myself a lot of time, you know, to feel like it's it, so you don't have to feel like you're rushed. Just get in there and take your time with your intervals or do whatever you're doing, 50s or 25s or 100s and take a little time. Just, you know, but build up a little bit and then go sit in sauna for a half hour. It's nice when you have you can relax around the water like that. Mm -hmm. You didn't like that movie then, I take it. I thought thing. it was OK. Yeah, it was OK. It was pretty good, though. I yeah, didn't realize no, I, how I was, amazing that guy was. Pretty. Yeah, it was pretty good. He still, the yeah. thing I saw was he still holds the 5K, well, at least when that movie came out, under 19. I think he was broken. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that was a long time too. he held that. Yeah, he did. My favorite part of that movie was when the scout was out there at the cross country match in the beginning and they said, How am I supposed to? There's 200 runners. I don't know what even know what he looks like. And the guy goes, You'll see him. <laughs> that's right he came running around about 50 yards in front of everybody gold locks flowing in the air god that dude yeah that's how we roll yeah i think All i was right. so am amazed by it because i also just reread that uh shoe dog book by phil knight oh yeah and they shoe dog a air, what do they call it just shoe dog shoe dog yeah not not slum dog man that's where i was going with that shoe dog slum dog whatever he wrote that whole book and about Nike, the comp the company he formed, and uh, I think Jordan's name was only in it like three times at the end. It was wild. That is kind of nuts. Yeah, but, made the whole brand. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. But I mean, it was a good story. Maybe he's waiting to for part two because it was kind of all his struggles to get to Jordan. Really, the book. Yeah, yeah, that's what the movie was about too, right? So the, when they did it. Oh, there, there's a movie about it. Yeah, 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 I can't remember what it's called, but it's about Nike and like they're doing like Air Jordans and they want to go after Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember that. I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's out there. Well, I don't have time for that shit anymore. <laughs> That's right. We don't have time for that shit. <laughs> Neither do you. That's we don't have time to keep rambling either. As always, we love you guys. We appreciate you. Hope you got a lot of the podcast today. Uh, and if you didn't, Go back in the archives. Find one that find one that better <laughs> see to get something out of. Uh, we hope you have a great weekend. And as always, go to our website, c26triathlon.com. And there's a one-stop shop for all things coaching camps and community. If looking for coaching for this year, you want to get headed in the right direction, click on the coach tab and find the coach that's right for you. If you need anything from Mike, he is available. Crushing iron at gmail.com. If you need anything from me specifically, c26coach at gmail.com. I just imagine somebody listening to this whole podcast getting nothing out of it and going, hmm, maybe I'll go back in their archives and see if there's something <laughs> better. <laughs> or what they're probably doing is they're going to time themselves eating salad tonight at 5 o'clock. I mean, if you got anything out of this, time your meals. Slow them down. Exactly. Time your meals. I like that. Savor the meal. Don't eat on the run. That's right. Or eat right before you run. Cut out 10 minutes of your screen time and put it in your meal time. For your swim. There you go. Well, thank you later. I like that. All right, buddy. All right, All right man. Have, have a great weekend. weekend.